Hi all, welcome to Deep Developer YouTube channel. So in this video, I will be discussing about 25 plus Spring Data JPA interview questions. These questions are being mostly asked for the freshers or the experienced professional. So if you are looking for a job opportunity or you are preparing for any kind of interview, then this video is very helpful to you. So welcome to my channel. So usually I make videos on java spring boot microservices rest api development so please subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friend so let's get started so i will not only tell you the answers i also explain you about the real life use cases and i will also tell you at the end what are the best way to answer this spring data jpa questions so first question they will basically ask like what are the dependency that we need to use in our project to work with the data jpa so if you are working with spring boot so you can drag directly import the spring boot starter data jpa and if you are not using spring spring boot then you can use spring uh, framework data like spring data jpa and also along with that you need to use hibernate orm tools so next questions they can ask like that's the basic questions they will ask like what is jpa and how it is related to spring data jpa so so we know that jpa is a java persistent api and it is mainly used for managing relational data and the spring data jpa is a part of spring data that simplifies the jpa uses by reducing boilerplate code that means implicitly we don't need to write the sql query or less sql query and also all the modification for the configuration will be done by the spring so here the use cases is that so it is storing the java object example the user employ any object to the relational database without writing the sql so you will writing the java object and that java object will be directly converted to the java table or the sql uh, mysql table next question is that what are the key annotations used in jpa so uh, we in our previous videos also we have worked with entity tables id generator value columns so these are the mostly used annotations that uh, we are using in our day to day project uh, there is a many to one one to many so what happened that you can explain this each one by one like entity class is used to or the entity annotation is used to mention a class as an uh, entity or the table and the table annotation is to mention the specific table name id is for the primary key generated value is to mention how that id will get the value automatically column is to mention the column and many to one and one to many is for like one to many relationship so if there is a uh, user have more than one order so that case you can use one to many relationship next is that what is the difference between a jpa and hibernate so jpa is just a, a specification and hibernate is an implementation of that specification we can say jpa is the parent and the top of that hibernate is uh, we are using and we are using hibernate as a default jpa provider in the spring boot so as is shown in the previous uh, uh, slides though it's by default having hibernates and we are internally using hibernate then how do you define a primary key in the jpa so so to, to define a primary key we should have one classes or that we can mention with an entity and the top of that there will be one particular field so here id along id is a one field which is the primary key so you need to mention the id annotations which will be coming from uh, jakarta and the generated value we are mentioned as an identity generation type is identity means it will automatically get the value id will be one two like that so use case is that auto generation unique id for each database row so if we uh, don't want to specifically mention how the value will be generated then we can use this um, identity so it will automatically get generated then question is that what is the purpose of jpa repository so it is a spring data interface that provide crude paginations and custom query functionalities so when you are interacting with an users so we are basically or with any kind of entity we are doing some operation writing or fetching or deleting uh, deletion so by default if we extend this jpa repository by default there are few methods provided by the jpa repository so with that method we don't want to explicitly write the sql query to store the details on the database 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज दैट व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन क्रूड रिपोजिटरी एंड द जेपीए रिपोजिटरी सो जेपीए रिपोजिटरी इज बेसिकली एक्सटेंड द क्रूड रिपोजिटरी एंड एड जेपीए स्पेसिफिक फीचर्स लाइक जेपीए रिपोजिटरी हैव स्पेसिफिक फीचर कॉल्ड फ्लशिंग और द बैच ऑपरेशन एंड दिस क्रूड रिपोजिटरी इज ऑलरेडी हैव सम काइंड ऑपरेशन सी फॉर क्रिएट ऑपरेशन रीड ऑपरेशन अपडेट ऑपरेशन डिलीट ऑपरेशन सो इट्स मैंशन लाइक यूज जेपीए रिपोजिटरी फॉर एडवांस ऑपरेशन like when you will be dealing with pagination and the batch insertion that time we will be using so if you are still watching the video i will request you please subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comment section like in uh, which topic uh, i want to make the video you can mention that and next question is that how do you define a custom queries in the spring data jpa so by default most of the functions are there we can take use of that but also we need to uh, take use of custom query annotations so for that to write our own custom sql statement so for that in top of the any function so this is the find by email functions it is returning user object and it is taking an email as an argument so we will on the top of that we will write query annotations and the uh, simple sql query and if we pass any dynamic value like here email we are passing so question number 1 if there is more than two argument then question mark 2 like that which argument we want to pass so here it is fetched a user by email using jpql the next question is that how do you write a native sql query it is similar like the uh, query annotations but we to uh, after that we need to do comma and native query we need to mention as an true so what is the difference between jpql and the native sql they can ask the like jpql we only use uses entity names and the fields and native sql use actual table and the columns name like previously i used uh, jpql so like uh, we have find by id or find by name that are basically using uh, the um, we can say the entity names means uh, the class names uh, class fields name and the sql we need to uh, mention the actual uh, sql table so on there we can mention the actual columns name so jpql is for portability A native SQL is for performance optimization. You can uh, tell the difference that as well. So, uh, what is fetch type dot lazy and fetch type dot eager means? So, lazy is used to load the associations when only accessed, and eager is load the association immediately. So, we only use lazy when to avoid performance issues when we are dealing with large data set. So, for example, we want to get all the i employee details uh, from a of a company so that case we can use fetch type dot lazy then how do you implement one to many relationship in the jpa so do to mention that one to many relationship means a one instance or the one um, fields have a many relationship so here if we see like one to many mapped by user it is mentioned so a user can have multiple order entities so a user can have multiple order entities so this uh, Uh, this private list of orders and order so user object have this list of order so on that case we can use one to many many to one or many to many relationship and how to perform paginations and sorting by default the jpa repository is uh, have this facility to use pagination and the sorting so we, we will use the pageable and the sort in the repository method so instead it will return like page means user list of user it will be mentioned and in the pageable we can modify like how many uh, in one page how many instance we not we want to show so display paginated result on a web page so that will reduce the loading side loading time of an web pages and next is that how to use projection in spring data jpa so by using interface or the dto to return the parcel data so so for example uh, we some cases we no need to have like all the fields so on that cases we can uh, use this so that will um, return only the needed fields to reduce the bandwidth what is dto and why it is used in jpa so it is called data transfer object is used to transfer specific data between the layers so for example we are working in the service layer okay and we want to uh, convert into the uh, like repository layer or uh, from the controller layer we want to convert to the uh, service layer so on that case we can use dto object so it's it's improve the performance and the security by not exposing the entire entity so it is not require like 
uh, we have employee object and all the details uh, is to be shared with the other um, we can say other client or the uh, other medium so on that case so we can use like custom request response kind of entity so what is optimistic locking in jpa so it's prevent the data loss by using versions to detect the concurrent modifications so we can use version annotations so that any kind of modification it can be detected so to avoid overwriting changes in concurrent updates and how do we handle the bidirectional relationship so previously we used one to many right in our previous slide then one to many then we used mapped by user that user and order relationship so in that case you need to use mapped by to define the overriding sorry to mapped by to define the owning side so on that uh, the user own that side so that's why we use mapped by equal to user so here it's maintain the relationship between user and order with clear ownership so in that case like user should be have the ownership and how to prevent n plus one select problem so uh, if they can ask you about the n plus one select problem also like so when we are using the inner join operation then that will uh, give a lot of issues so we have used one sql operation so it is giving the result and finally it is giving the uh, some uh, end, end results so on that case it is uh, very useful to work with uh, to resolve the issue because otherwise the load time will get increased so on that case we can use at, at the rate entity grab or the fetch one here if you see to get the list of all user with the orders so you, we are using select you user from users join fetch user dot orders so like that we will can solve n plus one problem so what is cascading in jpa so to allow operation to propagate to related entities using cascade equal to cascade type all so uh, so its use case is persist or delete child entity automatically so if you are still watching the video i will suggest you please subscribe to the channel and you can comment down if you have any uh, issue you can comment down on the comment sections next question is that what is a save and save and flush method so save method we have mostly used in my uh, one uh, in our previous videos as well so it is usually stored the entity but may delay db write so database writing operation may de delay and the save and flush is immediately flushes the changes so when we when we can use save and flush so save and flush we can use when we need the db sync is needed so uh, that sync will be done automatically so when we are dealing with any banking kind of project then we can do this because at an within millisecond we want to we want to have those updates right next question is that how to enable jpa auditing so we can use create date annotation last modified date annotation enable jpa auditing annotation so it will track the creation and update time step uh, time stamp automatically next is next is what are derived query methods so method like uh, find uh, find by first name last name or the find by name uh, find by date are automatically implemented by the spring so it will no need to write uh, the query automatic uh, query explicitly so there is we already have like find by id annotation sorry method is there so find by then whatever uh, the um, field name you can mention that so that will automatically fetch the result then how to update an entity in the spring data jpa we know to add an entity we use same method but here first we need to fetch that find by id so by using id we are fetching and it is returning on optional of user and to get the user we are using dot get method and after the user is getter then we can set that email and we can then use the save with the updated user and next is what is modifying and when it is needed so it's used with the query for update and delete operations so this query is what it is doing it is updating the status using the user id and the status and user id will be shared and here we can use the modifying next is that can you use spring data jpa without spring boot as in our previous slide we have already like gone through this so the question is yes but uh, spring boot is uh, used to simplify the configuration with auto setup but without that we need to do the manual configuration next question is that what is the role of entity manager in the 
GPA. So it's provide API for crude operation and query execution manually. So it is mainly used in custom repository implementation. So that's all we have uh, done with this Spring Data JPA interview questions. And if you has any doubts, you can ask me on the comment sections. And to prepare with the JPA, first you need, you need to do some hands-on as well. So I am already making those videos on the channel. So you can subscribe to the channel to get more from it. So thank you.